Today, I'm going to modify a 2080T graphics card. It's a blower style 2080T. I want to upgrade it to 22 gigabytes and also replace the stock cooling solution with a triple fan cooler. The method for upgrading the VRM is widely available online. It's not technically challenging and there are plenty of videos that demonstrate the process. So, it's more for entertainment purposes than anything else. We'll start by disassembling the graphics card, replacing the VRM chips, and modifying the identification resistors. All right, the graphics card has been disassembled. We'll prepare a heating platform and remove the VRM chips. Before removing the VRM chips, we'll apply some soldering oil to make it easier to work on the solder pads in the future. Now, if you want to upgrade the VRM yourself, you'll need experience in successfully removing BGA chips, such as upgrading the memory on a router or similar experiences. Otherwise, the probability of failure is at least 90%. This kind of modification is not something that can be easily explained through words alone. It's more of a skill that can only be understood through practice. If you have enough resources, you can start by buying a cheap test card, like a GTX 450, and practice removing and resoldering VRM on that card first. Once you're confident in your skills, you can proceed to modify your high-end card. Now, let's get back to this graphics card. The VRM chips have been removed, and we're now working on the solder pads. Be careful when working on the solder pads, because there are many capacitors and resistors around them. If any are accidentally dislodged, they'll need to be replaced. The solder pads have been flattened using a suction tape, and now we'll clean them with a suction cup cleaner. After cleaning, we'll apply a thin layer of flux, making sure not to apply too much, as excessive heat during reflow may cause it to overflow. We'll replace the original 1GB VRM with single 2GB chips. In total, we'll use 11 chips to achieve 22GB. Typically, this kind of modification is done for tasks like training AI models. If your VRM capacity is insufficient, you won't be able to run such projects. That's why future high-capacity graphics cards will become more expensive. After placing the VRM chips, we'll use hot air to reflow them. Usually, a temperature of around 400 degrees Celsius and heating each chip for about 20 seconds will be sufficient. However, the exact time may vary depending on different people's experience and equipment. Now that the VRM has been reflowed, let's connect the card to a computer and see if it powers on. The card has reached stage B2. It should reach stage 9C, where we can see the ASUS logo. Although it powers on now, let's not celebrate too soon. We'll test the VRM to ensure that all the solder joints are good and there are no faulty chips. All right, luck is on our side. It's a successful upgrade. Now, since we want to change the cooling solution, we also need to relocate the rear power connectors to the top. The display shows 22 gigabytes. So let's run a 3D Mark benchmark to see if everything is working properly. The 3D Mark test is complete, and due to the low temperatures, it passed without any issues. So, this card has been successfully modified and is working fine. That concludes this video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.